the Western Michigan Broncos. Tim Lester last year took this team to an eight and excuse me eight and five record. Uh, they went six six and one against the spread. They won their bowl game. Absolutely blew out Nevada. And after that, the quarterback Caleb Ellaby and their wide receiver, star wide receiver Sky Moore, both decided they were going to leave early for the NFL draft. And Sky Moore got drafted, and Caleb Ellaby did not. Uh, but they lost a lot of other dudes as well. Wide receiver Jalen Hall transferred to Western Kentucky. The tight end Anthony Torres transferred to Toledo. Stayed in conference there. Defensive end Ali Fayad. Uh, the nose guard Ralph Holy. Uh, Holly, excuse me. AJ Thomas, the linebacker. Center Mike Caliendo. I mean, they lost some stud dudes. Uh, returning production, they are number 124 in the country, only returning 49% of their production, and they are dead last in offensive returning production, 27%. Uh, that ranks number 130. The defense, a little bit better, number 53 in the country at 70%. Um, the roster strength is still pretty good because they have recruited uh, really well for a MAC team. Tim Lester has done a good job. Uh, the the running back, Sean Tyler, like he's back. The wide receiver, Corey Crooms, is black. Uh, uh, excuse me, back. Uh, Sam Houston State's left tackle, Elisa Anderson. I believe that's how you say that. He is coming in, and he should be a hoss for them on the offensive line. Uh, they got... Braden Fisk back at defensive tackle. Cornerback Dorian Jackson back. Linebacker Zaire Barnes. Uh, looking at the offense, with without Ellaby, uh, you know, what is this team? Like, I don't know who starts between uh, Salopek and Hrabowski. Um, on top of that, in five seasons, Lester has really only had two starting quarterbacks. Like, will the efficiency drop off? Because Caleb Ellaby was a playmaker. I mean, he was awesome. This team passed the ball 62% of the time last year. They had a 62-38 split. I'm curious if Lester changes his philosophy if he can't find a quarterback that he trusts. Um, They need to replace four of their top six pass catchers, so that's certainly not good for an offense that throws the ball that much. Uh, And then looking at the defense, you know, this defense was not bad. They were number seven in the country in defensive passing success rate allowed, Uh, but they were number 124 in explosive play rate. Um... If you look at it, like they rank number 92 in 20 plus yards uh, plays allowed, um, which is crazy because of the, the passing success right there. But there are playmakers at every level of this defense. The question is can they actually play together? My keys to the season here are the defense has to limit the big plays and yet maintain their third down defense, which was number three in FBS last year. The offense has got to replace LB. They need new receiving threats to uh, establish themselves. The running back, Sean Tyler, is probably going to be a hoss here. They need consistency. This team upset Pitt last year and then got stomped a couple of games later at home by Ball State, who was not very good. I Just just play with consistency. That's what I'm looking for here. I've got them going 7-5 and five based on roster strength alone. Um, you know, like I, I think they can win at San Jose State. I think they can beat New Hampshire. I think they can beat Eastern Michigan, Ohio, uh, Miami of Ohio, Bowling Green. Like, these are all teams that, talent-wise, this team should be better than. I've, I've got them 7-5 because I trust Tim Lester. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if they miss a bowl game this year if the quarterback doesn't hit. Like, I, you know. Right. <clears throat> so, I, I got them 5-7. and seven. This is So, this is the biggest one we've got, we're, we're against because usually we're one game apart. Um, and, and now we're two. I, uh, I don't. Listen now, you're going to besmirch the good name of the the, the San Jose State Trojans. Come on. <laughs> um, I'm not doing that. This is this is a hard non-con schedule right here. I mean, outside of New Hampshire, they got Michigan State, they got Pitt, they got San Jose State. That's tough. And, and uh, but you 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 rang the bell at the very end. The last thing you said, it's all going to come down to the quarterback they pick, and oh, is yeah. he the right guy? And and here's the problem: if he's not the right guy. By the time you realize he's not the right guy, how many winnable games have you lost? All right? So, so c- because the schedule is real hard early, you, let, let's say, let's say you, you beat Michigan State, you lose Michigan State, you get walked. Then, you, then let's say you, you win a game against Ball State. Then you get walked against Penn State. And let's say, you, let's say you lose San Jose State. Then you beat New Hampshire. Have you figured out if your quarterback is good yet or not? No, not really. Not really. All I right, mean, you, so, you got so an idea, not, but so yeah. you're not gonna. Yeah, but when you're playing these real good teams and or these really bad teams, you're not gonna be able to judge your guy. You're just not. I would. I, if I was in a quarterback battle, I would be going to my AD and I'd be telling him, "Look, 
I don't want stars and scrubs at the first half of the schedule for non-cons, okay? I know we got a bunch of pay for wins. These big boys are going to cut us a check to kick the shit out of us. But I can't be playing New Hampshire. I need to find a team. And I guess San Jose will be your best test, right? That's your most even playing field that you're going to find probably. Well, that yeah, that but, and Ball State, I guess. And, oh, yeah, you get Ball State second game of the season. But, like, I, I you're right about that. I, I just feel like if you get it wrong, it could go real south real fast. Because by the time you're making the change, you could be four losses into the season already. Yeah. And you got half the season left. And then you got to hope the next guy, A, picks up the offense, or what if you were right all along and the next guy's worse than the first guy? And you just don't know. When you have an unknown, like a low star, um, you know, not highly recruited quarterback, battle going in you just don't know enough about these guys until they see a lot of bullets until you get them on the field and you start getting them against live competition you just can't practice this it's just not possible to find out in practice yeah what you hope for is that one of them establishes themselves uh, in fall camp. early yeah real early yeah i'm talking dominates and, and, and you never want this but you kind of want the other guy if he's not going to be the dude to kind of fall to pieces because you just don't want the question mark. You yeah. don't. You don't want it to be tight. Because then you you know you're in game four or five against San Jose State, and you're trying to figure out shit. Which one of these dudes do I put out here? Who do we go with? What are we doing? Yeah, uh, because it, it, like we always talk about coaches point, know everything. Let's say they're two. Yeah, but they, but they, they don't. Be two and two at that point, and you don't know <laughs> what you're doing. No, and and I can't say if I was the coach, I would know either. Like some, if these guys are really close, some of these guys, it's tough. It's hard. That's why they get paid a lot of money to do it. They got to make true. these decisions. This and is true. And if you're wrong, if you make the wrong call, it could go south early. And that's that's the only reason it's a five and seven, because I don't know enough about either one of these quarterbacks. And I feel like if you're flipping a coin right now, it, it doesn't matter where the coin lands. I think they're going to second guess it, which means at some point in time they're going to try to pivot to try to do something different in the middle of the season. And I just don't think that ends well. And I don't know that that's – oh, that's a bad coach. I, I think every coach would struggle with that. I think every one of them would. Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm with So you. I don't blame the coach for that situation. I don't blame the kids for that situation. It's just a situation where you just want to have a, a – listen, my team, my LSU football team is, is dealing with this right now. I think yeah, we got you got two three guys, guys. that are, that are going to be neck and neck all the way up. And if Brian Kelly makes the wrong call on the wrong dude – the season could be over by week five. I mean, it could be over by, like, week three. Well, yeah, I guess you're right if you're talking about yeah. trying to win a national championship because you lose two games at the ball game. But, like, that's that's the thing that you got to deal with when you've got a quarterback battle. you got a school like Ole Miss. They brought in a transfer. They know who their guy is. He ain't competing with anybody, okay? They, they can say all the camp stuff they want to say about, oh, this other guy is looking good. That's all bullshit, okay? The big five-star kid that got transferred in, he's going to start. He's going to play. That's the end of the story. <laughs> like, they know who the quarterback is. I'd rather have that than a quarterback battle. True, true. Uh, by the way, let me uh, let me correct you on something. Uh, San Jose State is the Spartans, not the Trojans. Uh, apparently, they, they oh, frown sure. on the Trojans. <laughs> so, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm just sure. in case was, there's that, any San that, Jose that, State nope, fans. That's, <laughs> that's on me. That's, that's just on me. It is all good. All right. Hey, listen, there... we've, we've talked, listen, we've talked San Jose State more than any college football podcast in the country. I'll I think you're right. I'll put my name on that. I think you're right. I'll put my name on that. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.